session. So I'll record from now on, from now, and then I'll re-record the portions that we missed. Okay. So um, let's see. So know the difference between um, know the two instances in which the terms supine and prone uh, are used. Uh, for the describe the position of the entire body facing up, supine, face down is prone. Uh, just the position of the palms of the hand, supine, palms up, prone, palms, palms down. Okay, then we come to the directional terms, which are used to describe different structures in the body. Um, there are a few of these terms that can be challenging. Um, medial and lateral uh, are uh, used to describe the position of a body structure in regards to the middle of the body, to the axis. So anything that is close to the axis is medial. Anything that's moved further from the axis will be lateral. So for example, if you want to describe the position of the ears with respect to the eyes, you can say that the ears are lateral to the eyes. In other words, the ears are further from the middle of the body than the eyes. The eyes are closer to the middle. By the same token, however, you can say that the eyes are lateral to the nose. The nose is right in the middle. So the nose is medial to the eyes. The eyes are lateral to the nose. Okay. Um, so that's how we, this, we use the uh, uh, terms. So the ears could, could be described as uh, uh, being uh, lateral uh, to the eyes. Uh, By token, if you were to uh, describe the position of the, uh, let's say, ribs in, with regards to the, uh, um, to the uh, navel, to the umbilicus, you can say the ribs are superior and lateral to the navel, for example. Okay. Uh, the other term that sometimes gives problems is proximal and distal. And proximal and distal are used to uh, describe the position of a structure in regards to the trunk of the body. So something that is proximal is something that is close to the trunk of the body. Uh, something that is distal is something that is far away from the trunk of the body. Okay? So, for example, um, Structures like the tip of the shoulder, which is called the acromion, and these are terms you should definitely know. Uh, the acromion, uh, the anterior aspect of the elbow is called the antecubitus, antecubital area. You could say that the antecubital area is distal to the acromion area. So the tip of the shoulder is closer. The acromion is closer to the trunk than the, than the antecubital area. By the same token, you could say that the antecubital area is proximal than the palms of the hand, which are distal, compared to the antecubital area. Okay. So proximal and distal are used to describe the position of structures in the limbs, in the upper limbs and the lower limbs. Um, something else that is used oftentimes to, uh, in, uh, when we use directional terms are the thumb, which you should know is called the pollux, and the toes, which you should know are called the helix. And we can say that the helix are medial to the pollux. Uh, you could say the pollux is distal to the antecubital area. Okay. Okay, in the anatomical position. We always assume in the anatomical position. Um, the other terms that I want to note are anterior and ventral and posterior and dorsal. Because human beings walk uh, upright, the uh, term anterior and ventral, which means belly, are synonyms. So we can use them interchangeably in human structures. So you can describe something as being ventral or as being anterior in a human. By the same token, the term dorsal means backbone. And again, because, uh, or vertebral column. So because walk upright, the backbone is on the back. And the terms posterior and dorsal in a human being are synonyms. And we use them interchangeably. So you definitely need to know that dorsal is a synonym for posterior, ventral is a synonym for anterior. 
Um, the other instance, and so in the test, let me just go talk about that. In the test, expect to uh, have um, uh, terms uh, and anatomical structures and be able to fill in the blanks using directional terms uh, that are going to describe the location of these anatomical structures. And the anatomical structures that are typically used um, would be things like the acromion area, the antecubital area, the tip of the shoulder, which is called the olecranon, is another one that is typically used. Uh, the, you know, the pollux, the, the location of the halux, uh, the calcaneus, which is the heel, is another one that's a uh, favorite. Um, obviously, the umbilicus, you should know the umbilicus. Okay. Um, and one more thing before I go on this, move on to other things. Uh, the, um, the other thing we do with these terms is um, we use them in a practical, we give you practical examples. So, for example, uh, the eyeball. The eyeball is moved by a series of muscles that are found around the eyeball. And so, if this is the nose right there, uh, one of these muscles will be close to the nose, so it will be medial. The other one will be farther from the nose, will be lateral. So this muscle will be called the medial rectus. The other one will be called the lateral lect rectus. So this is a, a practical example of these terms that are used to describe the position of things like you know, muscles. Uh, this will be the superior rectus. That will be the inferior rectus. So you could find uh, these practical um, examples in, in a test, for example. Okay. So let me move on to terms. Anatomical terms, we have a long list of them. Uh, concentrate on the ones in red, and especially the ones that we use over and over again. Uh, the ones that we really are, we consider important are the ones that are going to come back. They're going to come when we go over bones and when we go over um, muscles. So things like um, ocular and um, occipital mental, vocal. We're going to find all of these terms again when we look at muscle and uh, bones. Uh, cervical, which means neck. And you may wonder why uh, the cervix is called the cervix, the cervix of the uterus, which is the neck of the uterus. The word cervical means something that is narrow and long. So that describes the neck. That's why the neck is called cervical. And the neck of the uterus is narrow and long. That's why it's called the cervix. Um, let's see, other terms that are uh, important, obviously the terms that have to do with the cavities, thoracic, abdominal, uh, pelvic, uh, the umbilicus is important, the navel, uh, inguinal, which pertains to the groin area, we mentioned dorsal, pertaining to the backbone, um, lumbar, we'll, we'll come back later to describe things like uh, uh, regions on the spinal cord, um, coxal, a gluteal, as in gluteal muscles. Um, okay, let's go for these terms right here. Axillary under the arm, brachial, uh, meaning arm. So if uh, in the arm, let me draw an arm here. So this is an arm. Um, in lay terms, we tend to call the whole appendage the arm. That's not anatomically correct. Uh, in anatomy, the antecubic area is the anterior aspect of the elbow. Okay. The acromion area is the tip of the shoulder. The, this, the area this, between the acromion and the antecubital area, that's what we mean by the brachial or the arm area. So the brachial area is the area between the tip of the shoulder and the antecubital area of the elbow. The antebrachial area is between the carpal, which is the root area, and the, um, and the antebrachial area. Okay, so keep these terms straight and note the actual location. And all this information is useful for both lecture and lab. Just didn't necessarily mean to do that. Give me a second. Okay. All right. Um, Again, remember, pollux is the term for thumb. Um, acromial, again, very important. It pertains to the point of the shoulder. Olecranal, very, very important, is the tip of the elbow. 
Uh, femoral is the thigh, so it would be the area between the um, uh, the hip and the patella, which is the uh, kneecap. The leg itself, uh, it's not in red, so you don't have to know it. That's the cruel area. Another important term is right here is halux for toe. And then uh, calcaneal is also important, which pertains to the heel. So a lot of these terms are going to be used together with directional terms um, to uh, in, in the test. OK, so now we move on to quadrants or regions. And the first thing here is to not to get them confused. So if a question asks for quadrants, answer quadrants. If it asks for regions, answer regions. So that's the first thing. Don't get them confused. Uh, quadrants are easy because uh, this is just four uh, spaces that are made by uh, making an imaginary line through the umbilicus and then another one across. And that gives you four areas. And so they uh, know the right upper quadrant and the main is located in the right upper quadrant, which in this case would be the liver. Uh, the left upper quadrant has uh, the stomach. The liver is such a huge organ that it doesn't leave room for much else. So on the right upper quadrant, we're going to have mostly just the liver. Everything else is pushed to the left, the stomach. And then over here, we have the little spleen completely to the left. OK. Um, on the uh, left, and right over lower quadrants, we're going to find intestines. The urinary bladder is split between the right lower quadrant and the left lower quadrant. Uh, notice something else about uh, intestines. Notice that the intestines go up, then they curve right here, right where the uh, liver is located. So that would be a, a hepatic uh, flexure uh, right where the liver is. Then they go across to the left upper quadrant. It, uh, curves again in the area where the spleen is located. So that's called the splenic flexure and then goes down. So the uh, large intestines are found in the right up, uh, lower quadrant. Uh, they bend, they go across, they're in the right upper quadrant, they go across to the left upper quadrant and then down to the left lower quadrant. Um, the appendix is located right there in the right lower, uh, lower quadrant. So that takes care of the quadrants. Uh, the regions, now we have uh, nine areas instead of four. And these are made by making two lines on either side of the umbilicals here, and then uh, crossing that, those lines above and below. Okay, So you should know the names of the quadrants. Um, the right and left hypochondriac region, hypo for below. Chondro means cartilage. So this is the cartilage of the rib. So the area, the hypochondriac regions are located below the rib cartilages. That's what they're called, hypochondriac regions. Uh, note the organs, um, mainly the uh, liver in the right hypochondriac region and the spleen and the, the stomach on the left hypochondriac region. Between the hypochondriac regions is the epigastric region. Epi means upon, gastro means stomach. So in the epigastric region, we have mostly the stomach. Below the hypochondriac and epigastric regions, we have uh, right and left lumbar regions. So the lumbar area, that was one of the uh, terms in the uh, list of terms that we had to know. The lumbar area is the area below the ribs and above the, pe the pelvic bone. That's what we call the waist area right there. So in the lumbar regions, we mainly find intestines. The umbilical region in the middle, again, we have large and small intestines. Then we go to the iliac regions and the term iliac pertains to this large bone of the pelvic, which is called the ilium. And so that's why the iliac, right and left iliac regions are called iliac regions. Organs that we find there will be again intestines um, on either side. The hypogastric region right here, hypo for below, gastro for the stomach. OK, it's below the stomach. Uh, here we're going to find the urinary bladder. Okay. Um, so know the organs on the quadrants and the regions. Again, in the study guide of the uh, eCampus site, uh, module one, there is a series of charts that, comb that uh, uh, combine or summarize all of the organs found in these quadrants and regions. <laughs> and the main ones will be spleen, uh, liver, uh, urinary bladder, uh, stomach. Those are the main organs that we talk about, and appendix, because it's in one particular quadrant. The other thing we do with this, let me show you what else we do with the uh, quad, uh, with the regions. We use the regions 
to, uh, to test uh, directional terms. So for example, um, if I say which, term, which region is the one located uh, immediately left and superior to the umbilical region. Okay, so the umbilical region is here, immediately left uh, or immediately lateral, left lateral and superior to the umbilical region would be the left hypochondriac region, for example. Um, we can say, we can ask which region is located uh, medial to the right lumbar region. Okay, medial to the right lumbar region would be the umbilical region. If I say medial and inferior to the right lumbar region, now we're into the hypogastric region. Okay. So expect a question in which these regions are used to, uh, together with, um, with, an atom with directional terms. Uh, what I tell students that it might be useful is uh, the testing center should give you a scratch paper. You could just make the little uh, nine regions and use that to figure out these kinds of questions. Okay. All right. Um, so from regions and uh, quadrants, we jump to planes and sections. And uh, again, just know the terms. Uh, sagittal refers to a cut or a plane that divides the body into a right and a left section. Frontal or coronal is one that divides the body into a posterior and anterior section. So this is this direction right here is the frontal or coronal. And when we cut the body into, through that plane, we have an anterior portion and we have a posterior portion. So if we were to cut the body or the, or the head in a coronal cut, we'll divide the head, for example, into the face and the back of the head. Okay. A transverse cut gives you a superior and an inferior uh, section. So know the definition of the planes. Sagittal gives you a right and a left section. Frontal gives you a posterior and anterior section. Transverse gives you a superior and inf an inferior section. Um, when it comes to the sagittal plane, the, uh, uh, we specify if the plane is going through the middle of the body, that will be the mid-sagittal. And in that case, the right and left regions will be equal, at least in size. If we go parasagittal, now we're going away from the middle, and the right and the left portions will be unequal. A uh, term longitudinal and a cross section is typically used to describe cuts through organs. A longitudinal section is through the long axis of an organ. A uh, cross section, or sometimes called transverse section, is a cut through the short axis of the organ. And this is all also helpful for lab, not just for um, lecture. So then we go to body cavities, and the body has uh, body cavities can be divided into two uh, groups: the ones that are dorsal, remember dorsal meant uh, backbone, and the ones that are ventral or anterior. So posterior cavities, anterior cavities. The posterior cavities are two of them. The cranial cavity, which houses the brain, the vertebral cavity, which houses the vertebral column. Um, you should be able to identify the cavities using these picture in the PowerPoints. The, the ventral cavities are uh, two, which are then uh, later subdivided into other cavities. So the ventral cavities are going to be the thoracic cavity up here and the abdominal pelvic cavity down here. Note that these two cavities are separated by a muscle right there called the diaphragm. So there is a physical separation between the thoracic cavity and the abdominal pelvic cavity. Uh, the abdominal pelvic cavity is separated into the abdominal cavity right here in red, which is not protected by bone versus the pelvic cavity, which is down here, and that one is within, the, is, is surrounded by the pelvic bone. So between abdominal and pelvic cavity, there isn't a physical separation. There is not a muscle, like the diaphragm, uh, separating the cavities. Instead, there is an anatomical separation between these cavities. You should know the organs found in the abdominal cavity and the organs in the pelvic cavity. 
and refer to the organs in the PowerPoints. Now, the thoracic cavity, on the other hand, um, the organs that you need to know will be the lungs and the heart. And the thoracic cavity is subdivided into three other cavities. Two of these cavities are going to be called the right pleural cavity and the left pleural cavity. The pleural cavities uh, house the lungs, the right and left lungs. The middle cavity is called the mediastinum. And the mediastinum houses the heart. Mediastinum. Okay. Um, the mediastinum, mediastinum is further subdivided, but we're not that. We're just going to stop at just calling it the mediastinum. So you should know the pleural cavity houses the uh, uh, lungs, and the mediastinum houses the heart. Um, one thing to note: the, the term pleural is going to be used for other structures. In this case, the, plur, the, plur, the term pleura is referring to the cavity. Okay, so note that. So plural could be used for other structures. In this case, because it has the word cavity uh, following it, it's referring to the plural cavity, which is the cavity where the lungs are located. Okay. So now we've uh, reached the, almost the end. Uh, the last thing would be the uh, serous membranes. And the serous membranes are specific types of membranes that we find in the body that have uh, specific uh, characteristics. One of them is that serous membranes are double layer membranes. So that, um, and they are going to be covering organs and uh, the cavities. So one of the layers is going to be touching the organ, and we call that layer the visceral serosa. Viscera is another term for organ. The other uh, layer is going to be lining or touching the walls of the cavity, and that's going to be called the parietal serosa. Between the cavities, there is fluid called the serous fluid. There are three of these serous membranes found in the body, uh, the pericardium, the pleura, and the peritoneum. The pericardium is the serous membrane that covers the heart. Uh, it has two components. Uh, which is the characteristic of uh, serous membranes. We have the visceral pericardium, which touches the heart, the parietal pericardium, which is going to be uh, covering the thoracic cavity. Um, this is uh, one of the instances in which we use the directional terms the, for uh, uh, deep and superficial. So we can say that the visceral uh, serous membrane is deep to the parietal serous membrane. The pleura is the serous membrane covering the lungs. So in this case, we're not talking about the pleural cavity. We're talking about the pleural serous membrane. So we're going to have the parietal pleura, which covers the thoracic cavity, and the visceral pleura is touching the lungs themselves. The peritoneum is the serous membrane that surrounds the organs of the abdominal pelvic cavity. And this is a complex membrane. Again, it has two layers. The visceral peritoneum covers the organ itself. The parietal peritoneum right here is uh, touching the walls of the abdominal pelvic cavity. OK. Um, let's see. Yeah, the last thing here is uh, the uh, term itis means inflammation. And so you should know that peritonitis is an inflammation of the peritoneum. Pericarditis is an inflammation of the pericardium. Uh, pleuritis or pleurisy is an inflammation of the pleura. So this uh, refers to inflammations of these membranes. Okay. Um, the test doesn't really cover uh, imaging techniques. So these are just there for your information. We're not, you're not going to be tested on these. Any questions over this information? Okay. So, um, I will re-record the first part that we missed because I forgot to turn on the recording. Uh, it takes some time for the download. So the download may not be ready until tomorrow morning. And then, but as soon as it's ready, uh, I'll check tonight and see if it's ready. As soon as it's ready, I'm going to post it on the announcements and send it out as an email. So it will come as a link that you can uh, click or copy and paste and uh, have access to, the, to, the, to this um, uh, session that we went through. 
Um, I'm, gonna, I'm going to schedule another session for tomorrow to go over chapter four, and pretty much I'll do the same thing. We'll go over the PowerPoints you know, fairly quickly, just going over the main points. Um, what else? I think that is it. Um, so I will uh, sign up now. Oh, oh, okay. Do you have a question? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, go ahead. Uh, my question is not directly related to the lecture, it's about the exam. Yes. Uh, I'm taking the exam in a different uh, uh, university, and I was wondering, the proctor form, do we need to notarize it, or how do we do that? No, do not, no. You, don't, you don't have to notarize it. It does have to be a testing center, though. That's the only thing. Uh, you don't have to notarize it. Uh, just get me the information as soon as you can, because I need to contact the testing center. And okay. That, that goes for everybody, you know, just if, if you're going to test at a different location from a Dallas County Community College uh, testing center, please get moving on that right away because I do need to contact them and, you know, then we need to, you know, uh, okay. need to send them. So, yeah, take care of that quickly. It doesn't need to be notarized, though. And, okay. yeah, yeah, one thing will also, as soon as you have the form, either take a picture of it and send it to me uh, on an email or uh, scan it and send it to me. Okay, so I've, sent that already. I've sent it to you. I just wanted to make sure if you needed the notarized part because I, I took it to the testing center and they completed it and signed it to. Perfect. But, send it okay. Yep, perfect. Okay. Yeah, no problem. And that also reminds me if you're testing at a different location, I mean, if you're, if you're testing at a Dallas County Community College testing center that is not Northlake, you need to tell me because I'm in the process of sending the requests. So I've already sent a whole bunch of them and uh, do it as soon as possible. It doesn't take long to do these for the, for the Dallas Community College, but you still need, I need, I need to know, okay? So that's it. Any other questions? Thank you. No, you're welcome. Okay. So I'll, uh, anything else, just send me an email. I'm going to sign up now. Oh, okay. Oops. Oh, okay. Would you hold it just a second? I just saw that. I couldn't read it. Okay. I have a question about the. No, okay. I missed that one. Was that a question? I'm sorry. I missed it. Huh. Uh, when I go in, it says there's no costume. Co yeah, okay. Uh, the... Oh, gosh. Okay. Um, I do have. Okay. 